Across the course of human history, great conflicts have been fought that promised to be the war to end all wars. Yet every victory brought only humiliation, hardship, and bitter resentment to the defeated. So it was again in 2204 when the shattered remnants of the Helgen administration, forced off the Eden world of Vecta in the aftermath of the first extrasolar war, were exiled to the brutal and barren planet that was their namesake. From the ashes, however, there arose dreams of a new order, and the Helgen people rallied around the charismatic scholar Vasari, whose vision of a new, unbreakable nation captivated millions. Through his leadership, the last vestiges of the old regime were swept away, and in its place, the Helgen marched united in purpose under the banners of the Helgen Empire. At the center of this new nation was an old idea, that the Helgen people had been robbed of the opportunity to prosper from their own labor and greatest success. While exaggerated and simplified for the benefit of state misinformation campaigns, the rhetoric did have a basis in history, one that stretched back to the earliest days of human colonization. In 2111, still reeling from a nuclear war and in terrible need of sustainable resources, Earth's most powerful nations begun a massive campaign to colonize extrasolar star systems. Under the auspice of the United Colonial Nations, or UCN, a fleet of six colony ships was dispatched to the Alpha Centauri system, hoping to spearhead the next stage of human civilization. Tragedy struck when the ships were lost in an apparent solar flare, and the UCN, economically desperate, auctioned the settlement rights of Alpha Centauri to Earth's wealthiest corporations. Despite allegations of bribery and corruption, the Helgen Corporation, an energy, industrial, and mining conglomerate, won the bidding process. The journey to Alpha Centauri was difficult, and hundreds died in cryosleep. Within the star system, however, two planets were found capable of supporting human life. The first, named Helgan, while abundant in raw resources, was nearly inhospitable. A toxic atmosphere shrouded its surface, and the planet was tormented by frequent storms. The second planet, by contrast, was a verdant paradise, covered in fertile land, flowing lakes, and great oceans. It was named Vecta, in honor of the corporation's CEO. With the resources of Helgen and the prosperity of Vecta, the Helgen Corporation, over time, transformed the Alpha Centauri system into the principal hub of interstellar civilization. As new colonies were established by the UCN, the flow of ships and trade through Alpha Centauri brought with them enormous wealth and opportunities. Now functioning as a quasi-nation state, the Helgen Corporation began transitioning into a civil administration, reorganizing itself first into the Helgen Protectorate in 2138, and then the Helgen Administration in 2152. Finally, in 2155, the Helgen government purchased the entire system outright from the still economically fragile UCN. As humanity's central colony, the growing power of the Helgen administration raised concerns within the UCN, of which Helgen itself was still technically a member. Tensions slowly grew as the UCN rescinded certain rights it had accorded Helgen and Vecta, while simultaneously creating a fleet of warships, should a military solution become unavoidable. With its future prosperity strangled under the weight of Earth's demands, Helgen officially declared independence in 2199. Despite their immense numerical advantage, Helgen forces were, at best, an armed customs service, while in space their picket ships were no match for the ISA's purpose-built warships. The heaviest fighting was over within a year, bookended by acts of terrorism and small skirmishes. In an attempt to quell the lingering fighting and prevent a costly occupation, the UCN assumed governance over Vecta, but allowed the Helgen administration to retain control over Helgen itself, subjected to blockades and restrictions until diplomatic relations could be normalized. 
Millions of Helgen loyalists departed Vecta for Helgen in the ensuing years, faced with a bleak existence rife with illness, starvation, and hardship. Helped along by basic genetic conditioning and a variety of treatments and implants, the Helgen population grew more resilient to its environment with a privileged few even capable of surviving without the use of oxygen masks while outdoors. While the situation slowly improved, the long-term outlook of the nation remained grim. Stifled under the strict conditions imposed by Vecta and the UCN, the singular and remarkable figure of scholar Vasari rose to prominence. A master orator, Vasari was the first to give voice to what later became the principal keystone of the Helgen philosophy, that the people of Helgen had been strengthened by their environment and transformed into a superior, extra-human race, the Helgast. After an apparent attempt on his life, Vasari leveraged his public support and with the help of the military took part in a successful coup against the Helgen leadership. Rebranded as the self-proclaimed Autarch of Helgen, Vasari consolidated his position as supreme authority and enacted a series of transformative political, social, and economic policies. The Helgast government was predominantly authoritarian, with political power residing firmly in the office of Visari. The Helgen Senate served as the Autarch's cabinet of advisors, with military and corporate interests disproportionately represented, yet completely subservient to the interests of the state. These fascist elements permeated every aspect of society with ultra-nationalism, militarism, and total commitment to the nation intertwined with Helgast culture until they had become one and the same. Particular attention was given to the filtration masks and other breathing apparatuses used by Helgen citizens, transforming them from symbols of shame or weakness to those of pride, evidence of having overcome extreme struggle and hardship. This new ideology was represented by the Helgas Triad, three arrows symbolizing the highest virtues of duty, obedience, and loyalty. Even the old languages of Earth, proclaimed outmoded by Vasari, were replaced with a new written language designed to dissuade alternative thinking by eliminating certain words and concepts. The government's military first policy had inflicted substantial adversity upon the people of Helgen, but the massive rearmament programs had achieved a stunning level of success. In 2357, the Helgen Empire launched a massive invasion of Vecta in a bid to reunify the Alpha Centauri system and reclaim what they had lost. The early stages of the invasion were a stunning success, with Helgas double agents even managing to disable the network of orbital defense platforms surrounding Vecta. A UCN counterattack, however, combined with the actions of the war hero Jan Templar, routed the Helgast from the planet and paved the way for an invasion of Helgen itself. In 2359, ten ISA battlegroups arrived over Helgen. Despite their technological superiority and orbital blockade, the fleet began taking significant losses to new weaponry based on petrocyte, a powerful element native only to Helgen. Fierce Helgas resistance crippled the ISA, and a counterattack by infamous Helgas Colonel Radic succeeded in mortally wounding Templar, who managed to disable the petrocyte shield perimeter around the Helgen capital of Pyrrhus in his final moments. With the way to Pyrrhus open, the ISA launched a bold attack with the intention of capturing Scholar Vasari and ending the war. The fighting reached all the way to the Imperial Palace, but Vasari, in the confusion, was killed. In death, he was transformed into a martyr, and the arrival of Helgen ships kept hidden in reserve destroyed any hopes of a sudden victory. Six months after the death of Vasari, ISA forces on Helgen capitulated, formally ending the war in a status quo antebellum. In the wake of Vasari's death, a political conflict over who would become his successor began dividing the empire. The two favored candidates were Admiral Orlok, commander-in-chief of the armed forces, and Jorhan Stahl, influential chairman of Stahl Arms. When Orlok was named Autark, Stahl refused to hand over several prototype weapons and Helgen was plunged into civil war. 
One such prototype was an enormous warship intended to decimate the surface of the Earth with petrocyte weaponry, annihilating the UCN leadership in a single stroke. As fighting raged in orbit, ISA remnants were able to cripple the ship, which then exploded in low orbit. The superweapon's petrocyte weaponry ignited a chain reaction which spread across the surface of Helgan, obliterating most of the planet's population. In time, the survivors would be transported to Vecta to live under the governance of a new successor state. But the time of the Helgen Empire was at an end. The Templin Institute investigates nations, organizations, and factions from alternate worlds and realities. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Do you have a suggestion for a future episode? Let us know by leaving a comment.